thank you. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone uh, by presenting today, so it's, I'm very excited to be here. So before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land and sea and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people living in our community today. So for those of you that don't know me, which is basically everyone in this room, um, uh, my name is Tony and I'm an archaeologist. I specialise in maritime archaeology. So I have over 15 years experience and I've worked for Heritage Victoria and also for the Department of Environment and, and Science. I now, as I as already stated, work as a consulting archaeologist. Um, over the years, I've had a lot of people asking me what actually is maritime archaeology and is it a real job? So that's the definition um, up there. Um, and it's my job to protect underwater cultural heritage. Um, today I'm going to be speaking about shipwrecks, but it's not just shipwrecks. There's also um, indigenous submerged landscapes, um, jetties, and all of that kind of things. <coughs> So maritime archaeology is not Indiana Jones, Lara Croft, or dinosaurs, despite everyone asking me a lot about dinosaurs. So um, a little bit of context first up. So in Australia, we have over 1,400 historic shipwrecks and over 120 plane wrecks. So when I say historic, I'm talking about um, something that's been underwater for 75 years or longer, and that's just those wrecks. Um, the map up here on your left are the plane wrecks and the, map, um, the other map are the shipwrecks. And if you look at the red shipwrecks and the green shipwrecks, the green are our located wrecks and the red are our unlocated wrecks. So we haven't found the majority of our shipwrecks yet. Throughout Australia, we have over 8,000 historic shipwrecks. Um, and it's estimated that there are approximately 3 million shipwrecks scattered across the ocean globally. So the red, the red dots, sorry, <laughs> the red dots um, are our, um, our hotspots for, for shipwrecks. So why are shipwrecks important? Um, because they're like time capsules and they give us a rare glimpse into a single moment in time and they can help us to understand the events from the past. Written history often tells us uh, what people say they did. Archaeology tells us what people actually did, and that's why I love archaeology. So some wrecks are also grave sites, and they need to be respected. Uh, they are also the oldest artificial reefs in the world and are a habitat for marine flora and fauna. In fact, research shows that shipwrecks host more fish than natural ones and are biodiversity havens uh, for corals. And because of this, shipwrecks and other underwater cultural heritage, I think, have a huge capacity to engage in the climate change debate, um, as they are ideally placed to determine broad scale trends of how corals and other marine flora and fauna is changing through time. Archaeology, like shipwrecks, also give voice to people not often written about in history, such as indigenous people, children, women, the elderly and sick, and people with disability. An example of this is the historic shipwreck Foam, which wrecked on Myrmidon Reef in 1893. So Foam was a blackbirder that was actively engaged in the labor trade in Queensland at the time of wrecking. So blackbirding verged on slavery and in Australian context, South Sea Islanders were coerced to travel by ship to Australia and work on farms, mainly sugarcane farms, for very little money. <coughs> At the time of wrecking, Foam was returning a group of 84 South Sea Islanders back to the islands. Foam is hugely significant to South Sea Islanders and especially to descendants from this wreck, and it's also an artificial reef. Yongala is Australia's version of the Titanic. Uh, this ship mysteriously disappeared without a trace during a cyclone in 1911, one year before Titanic sank. On board were 122 people, a prize ball, and a racehorse called Moonshine. And this was one of the most tragic maritime disasters in Australian history. And to this day, we're still um, not 100% sure why Yongala wrecked. Today, Yongala um, is classified as one of the world's best known wreck dives and is home to the most spectacular abundance of marine life I've ever seen. And this includes turtles and sharks and manta rays and um, sea snakes, thousands of reef fish, corals, including black corals and sponges. 
And so these are just two very quick examples of shipwrecks. We have another 8,000 amazing stories that we can tell. So today, maritime archaeologists and heritage managers are encountering many problems, uh, including climate change, funding, and staff shortages, and also looting. Should come as no surprise that the biggest threat to historic shipwrecks is climate change, uh, such as sea temperature rise, major storms, and cyclones. The map you see here is the map of the foam shipwreck, and all those squiggles on um, the screen are tracked cyclones that have come in close proximity to the wreck. So we know that corals love to grow on flat, sur flat surfaces like shipwrecks, and it's actually these corals and coral concretions that are aiding in protecting wrecks. So once these are stripped, it increases flash rusting and rapid deterioration. Sadly, in Australia, maritime archaeologists have really dropped the ball on the climate change debate, and we are actually not recording any coral or marine life data. And it's a real shame because we go to really remote places like far north Queensland and also the Coral Sea, and we just, we're just such big nerds, we just look at the archaeology. But what if we were actually recording the reefs and the, re the wrecks? It, it's a huge opportunity that we've missed. And, you know, ships and plane wrecks are non-renewable, so once they're gone, they're gone forever. Another problem across Australia is that we have limited funding, and most states do not have boats or expensive equipment to go looking for these sites. We also have limited um, staff, and recently in Queensland, we've lost two full-time position maritime archaeology positions. One was with the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Foundation, uh, Foundation, and the other was with Department of Environment and Science. So now we have one and a half positions for all of Queensland, um, and that's a real shame. So don't quote me on this, but I believe it is less than 1% of the global world that are divers. Um, so how can we take that 99% of other people um, underwater with us to showcase these amazing stories that belong to everyone? How can we include people with disabilities, indigenous people, children, and um, people in developing countries who might not have these resources? How can we undertake better education? Um, it's not to say that we're not already trying to do education. Uh, we do have a not-for-profit organization called AMO, so AMO is the Australasian Institute for Maritime Archaeology, and we do run a two-day maritime archaeology course for community. I am the Queensland State Tutors. Um, but at the moment, we have really low um, tutors, and we have um, low time. And, and these courses are really fantastic, and we get a lot of people that are really keen to, to continue volunteering with us. So earlier this year, I put a citizen science project to get together called Reefs on Rex, which kicked off in March this year. Um, the project is in its very, very early stages, um, and I've already learned so much. Um, the idea was to see if there was any interest in community um, to use citizen science as a tool to survey shipwrecks and surrounding reefs. I wanted to start gathering knowledge about coral bleaching and recovery rates and to record reef and wreck, wreck impacts and to tie in the education element to the project. The methodology I started with included taking photos and video and doing reef check, reef health surveys and photogrammetry. So photogrammetry is a process where you take lots and lots of photos and you stitch it together in something called um, Agisoft, Metashape Agisoft, and it produces a 3D model. It's a really, really great way to monitor uh, coral reefs as, as well as shipwrecks and to educate those that aren't divers. Um, I first collaborated with um, the local dive club. Um, I was very fortunate that I had a lot of interest uh, and I had two club, club members donate their boats um, and we went out to uh, the Aros um, Historic Shipwreck in Norton Bay. Despite really bad sea conditions, uh, we managed to do um, a couple of dives which was really fantastic. Um, very quickly learned that there was a big problem and that was that everyone wanted to learn photogrammetry and so at the end of the day I had all this these photos um, that I tried to process and it quickly became very unmanageable. But it was great that everyone was super excited. The other problem was on our second dive in May, um, we had one of the boat's engines fail, so we were only able to have one vessel that went out to sight. Um, but still, we did some amazing um, research. And the other thing was that there was so much marine life on the shipwrecks that I found it very difficult to do the photogrammetry, so I'm gonna have to come up with a bit of a technique to use a broom or something to shoot all the, all the fish away. 
<clears throat> um, I also collaborated with Reef Check Australia. Um, I have been a Reef Check surveyor since 2018, and it took very little effort to um, talk um, Jodie Salmon, who's the general manager, into doing rec surveys. Uh, Reef Check is a not-for-profit citizen science organisation dedicated to empowering people to help reefs uh, um, and marine environments through hands-on research opportunities and community engagement. So earlier this year, we went um, to the Gold Coast and we did a reef check survey at Ray Wave Break Island and Palm Bay Beach wrecks. We also did um, the Scottish Prince shipwreck off Main Beach. Um, this worked really well as we got to compare local reef health with that of the local shipwreck. Um, so it wasn't done in isolation. The shipwreck reef health only took one 50 minute dive to complete and included three trained survey divers and I undertook the photogrammetry. Uh, we surveyed hard and soft corals, fish and sponges, as well as invertebrates like clams, sea urchins, sea cucumbers. We, took, um, we looked for human impacts, such as anchor damage to the reefs, as well as the wreck, um, and destructive fishing practices. We also surveyed and collected marine debris like fishing line and plastics, which gets recorded on the Marine Debris Initi Initiative, as well as Tangora Blue. I was also incredibly lucky to have collaborated recently with uh, Reef, e Reef Ecologic, so Adam Smith, earlier this month on the citizen science of the Great Barrier Reef Expedition. Uh, this was on the ecotourism vessel Coral Discoverer, where I was a guest lecturer. On this trip, we snorkeled the shipwreck foam, and of the 40 passengers on board, we had 38 people snorkel and dive the wreck, who ranged in age from 11 to 84. And over 95% of those people had never dived a historic shipwreck before. It was really, really cool. I got to give them a little personalized tour. I was very excited. So of the, in the one hour that we were on foam, we undertook 248 observations on iNaturalist, including 124 species, eight coral watch surveys, and four rapid monitoring surveys. This trip has it certainly opened my eyes to the power of um, citizen science. And I'm definitely going to be including um, uh, probably now about 10 citizen science um, survey methods into shipwreck stuff. And to top it off, we located a never before or recorded anchor that was on site. It was hugely significant um, and very, very exciting. Um, I was really congested, so I couldn't dive the site. So I had to get, um, I gave someone, I gave three people um, a 10 second um, instructions on how to do photogrammetry and they went down and we actually managed to get a photogrammetry transect of the actual wreck. So it was really, really cool. Um, and this, this anchor was just the highlight. Um, just want to thank all of these people, um, especially Reef Check and Jody Salmon and Adam Smith. Um, it's just has been such an amazing experience and I'm really, really open to feedback and, and any advice that anyone can give me because it's a really brand new project. And as a maritime archaeologist, we really, really suck at doing um, citizen science. So thank you so much. Thanks, Tony. Question over there. Hi. Um, I was just wondering the practicalities of using ROGs, like remotely operated vehicles, for your survey and whether that would you know, help out, especially in rougher weather and obviously um, you know, lessening the people, number of people. I know people like to dive. Yeah. But Look, ROVs are amazing and it's definitely a tool that we use as maritime archaeologists, especially in places like um, Prince of Charlotte Bay where there's a lot of crocodiles and um, things like that. And so, you know, there's over 100 historic shipwrecks in Prince of Charlotte Bay. So it's just a matter of finding those tools and those people that have ROVs and then accessing those sites, especially in Queensland where, we, you know, it's, everything is so remote. Um, and of course, we don't have any funding. I'm, I'm doing this project on my own. I don't have funding, which is why I'm, you know, collaborating with ReefCheck so we can, you know, do funding together and, and, you know, try and get an outcome like that. So I'm really into collaboration. So, but thank you. It, it's fantastic. I, I do love them. Thanks. We actually had um, Adam Smith talking on Tuesday, I think. Were okay. you here Tuesday? Oh, yes. He yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was nice to see the anchor, the photo of the anchor. I don't think he showed it. Thanks very much. Oh, hang on. <laughs>